this. What's up, Renee? Um, like that, another country. So, um, I, that, yeah. <laughs> that's how I call her personhood. Um, so like now, <laughs> um, yeah, I just want to focus on, like, that's so great. I want to focus on, I guess, more logistics of what is happening at this very spot. So how many um, community members would you say are active? I'd say that we have 50 people who are involved okay. and about but like, 15 but I would who actually occupy. Been, More than, no, at least 20 who are actually occupy. Uh, there's a, at least 100 like, loose people as a whole who have like given us food oh, and like... Well, in yeah. More than 100. More than 100. And if you start yes. counting the people who've come by and said thank you for doing what you're doing, oh, like students. you made me proud between to go to Dartmouth students. again, you know? Yeah. Between students, faculty, Alums. and local residents. Uh, I, I don't know, we're talking about a huge number of people. Visible supporters. Like, who have brought yeah. us food, who brought us coffee, who just say, what can we do, who have brought us supplies. Yeah. Who say, who like really seriously thank us for being here and for doing this. Especially at Dartmouth, where the last major political action that happened on campus was the Shantytown protests mm -hmm. in the early 80s. Okay. So, um... <laughs> Which is a pretty... Please, 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 for still being so, can you explain, um, you know, how you run shifts? Are there sign-ups, or is it just people, you know, volunteering? Uh, we have an email list, so people email and say, "I've got to leave soon. Can someone replace me?" But you know, I'd say that we have a relatively steady stream of people. It's, yeah, it's pretty. It's really informal. It's just basically like if, if you're, you're free. like the only person or the second to last person, and no one's yeah. coming, yeah. let's yeah. out, and someone. Will and cool. one important thing about that is that all coordination happens here. Okay. So we have our General Assembly meeting every day at 5, and everyone's brought to the same space to talk about these questions, even the logistical ones. And that makes it um, pretty functional to have a non-hierarchical okay. mode of organization. Yeah. I will, what was I going to say? I don't know. I can't believe we didn't get to talk about corporate personhood. <laughs> Oh, the other you thing... Wouldn't, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't say that you have, like, a president or any specific oh, no. roles? No, there's no... We believe in total horizontal organization. I mean, even our subcommittees are volunteer-based, and there's no leader within the subcommittees. Um, the, what, the other thing I'll say is that we really actively encourage people participating in this to take care of themselves, you know? And that's our, something that we've said from the beginning is we don't want people sacrificing their academics, sacrificing their personal health, uh, to, 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 to work with the movement and so you know this is an important support network for people who feel compassion and for people who want to see real democracy uh -huh. but we also encourage people to maintain their other support networks and you know like I'm the co-chair of GSX and this doesn't like I still fully participate in GSX like I'm in Breaking Eden I still fully participate in that you know in fact I more than fully participate in that because I'm doing this and now I'm getting interviewed by 99 Rock and whatnot to to talk about the relationship between that play and what we're doing here and when stuff you get for that? today <laughs> nice. okay. yeah. so do you have permission from the college or the town of Hanover to be in this spot so, yes. Yeah. So the town, the town of Hanover, has nothing to say this about is this. College property, right? right. Yeah. At first, the college suggested to us, we'll say, that um, it, we needed to adhere with town regulations in order to be here. And then we just discovered that the permits we were filling out for the town. Uh, the one for last week wasn't even submitted. Yeah, so the college is making us fill out permits, so, but they're not submitting them to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, they're going to be pissed at us for sharing that. For telling people that? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess they don't want us to tell everyone yeah. the truth. <laughs> right. So, so the, ta the college... I mean, the college has these rules that they created after the Shantytown protests. Okay. So, and Seeing you can that find was a very the, destructive influence on Dartmouth, right, in, yeah. on Dartmouth campus. On the, you can no longer have structures. Right. So <laughs> the rules are, the rule, you can find them in the student handbook. It's quite restrictive. Officially, you're not allowed to carry on protests for more than six hours. You're not allowed to have structures. And that includes, as we know th through experience, hanging a tarp over your head while it's raining. So or, 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 or so, stack so we, some so cardboard here, boxes. So like you, you can't even pile things. Yeah, you can, okay. like, <laughs> pile seats. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. We night. came out here Thursday night. October 13th. To, October 13th. 
because that's when Bloomberg was threatening to evict the protesters. And we uh, set up, we hung a tarp over our heads because it was going to rain. And SNS told us that we were not allowed to have a tarp because that counted as a structure. And if we didn't take it down, they would call the police. Okay. We were also told that we were not allowed to sleep. And that if we went to sleep, they would give us a warning. But if we continued to sleep, they would call the police. <laughs> and they would charge, have us charged with trespassing. Then we, had, we started an email campaign of our, for our, of our supporters demanding that the administration let us have a tent so that we wouldn't all get sick and die, basically. <laughs> Um, well, he has pneumonia. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, I think I'm developing really, a lung disease. Like, <laughs> but I had a bad cough. And so then, and so then, they told us that we could put up a tent. But when was that? that was, I think, Sunday. Yeah, yeah. it was Sunday. So three, three days. days. Last no. the Sunday after the, the Thursday that we came out. Here. Yeah. Three so, days. Yeah. Later. Three days in. So we're out here for a few days, just sitting here with like blankets and umbrellas. Um, and now. And now the administration is deciding whether they're, they're, they're actually, it's actually unclear. They're in the process of deciding whether they're going to enforce against us uh, their rules about structures. So when will you know that by? Uh, we should know by the middle of next week. Okay. Uh, my next question. This is really great, by the way. It's been, this is good. good. We agree. We love um, <laughs> Okay. So, um, any time. <laughs> come, <laughs> come occupy. <laughs> or come sit and talk. I don't think my dad would like that. Does he work for Goldman Sachs or something? He, he works on Wall Street. <laughs> well, some Wall That's Street cool. people support the education. A tuck yeah. student, several tuck students. A lot students. of tuck students, tuck students support it. Really? Actually. I'm actually yeah. interested. So, that's an interesting comment that we get in terms of fear sometimes. Like, um, we'll get things like, how can you say this when, you know, chances are some of you, like, you know what I mean? Like, We're always like, accused of hypocrisy. Yeah. yeah. From the most, like, deep... Some of you what, come what, from wealthy backgrounds or rich backgrounds. Yeah. Well, I mean, which is, we, I mean, I, mean, I think... We don't keep a what? list. But, you know, you like, kind of infer from, like, yeah, just, like of, uh, probability uh, and knowing how many people are wealthy yeah, at Dartmouth. Well, yeah. for but I, I think that it's actually, like, a... It, it's either... It's a... <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, it's kind of like People seem to think that we can't demand justice for the poor if we're not poor. Okay, that's a good question. And also, <laughs> I, I don't actually necessarily accept the fact that people out here from wealthy backgrounds are, are like are, are even though like obviously they're they're privileged and um, they have like a lot going for them. Like we are right now in an economy where I think it's actually really delusional for Dartmouth students to assume that we're all going to go gallivanting off into these these beautiful lives of yeah. like of wealth and and and, um, and luxury. When like yeah. in reality, our generation is so vastly underemployed, so underpaid because we like because of the high unemployment rates. Like I, I think that like it's it's actually it's it's really sad in fact that there aren't more people realizing yeah. that these issues really will like do and will affect them quite shortly yeah. and it's it's a it's a bit of a fantasy because yeah. you know you come here to to become rich you come here because i mean a lot of people do I, a lot of people, but i didn't yeah, yeah and a lot of people came here to to like you know get onto that track of of, of wealth and prosperity and it, se it seems like it, it just it, it's too much with their self image to be like well like i'm going to be at the top of a fundamentally in unjust system like you can like, <laughs> I, I, well, but a lot of those people still support what we're doing yeah a yeah. lot of people some have things, passed, have things passed things by on their way to corporate recruiting and they say i actually really support what you're doing okay just like a lot of tuck students have said i mean some tuck students have given us endless shit but i'd say the majority of T people who identify themselves so, like, as tuck students to us I mean, have said, I actually really support what you're doing. I actually have a really interesting anecdote about this, if okay. you want yeah, more. I'm, I'm here I, to I think you're right. a lot of good anecdotes. Okay, well, so, over homecoming, I was actually talking with a friend of mine who graduated last year. She's working two jobs in Washington, D.C. right now. One for a liberal think tank that she really agrees with, that doesn't pay her anything. 
and the other for this super conservative think tank that she totally disagrees with but will pay her $10 an hour. And she's making $950 a month and having to pay $750 a month on rent. And she literally was amazing. Like, she's lost 15 pounds since I've seen her la last. She is starving. She's going on food stamps this week, actually, because she can't afford to pay rent and buy all of the things she needs to just survive, much less get anything that, that, you know, for herself, for the sake of recreation, you know, for any, you know, she just has no freedom because she's economically bound, you know? And, and she's forced to actually support the people who are creating her oppression because it's the only way she can afford to survive. You know, and she's a Dartmouth grad with a really good GPA and like, you know, she's a brilliant, hard-working individual who like, is starving and graduated from Dartmouth. Do you think, you know, 